Influencing everything from the birth of hip hop to the spread of rock behind the Iron Curtain, the cassette tape is much more than just another way to listen to your favorite tunes. We could even say these personal, portable recorded cartridges changed the face of the music industry forever, even if we no longer play them in our cars. Let's rewind to get the full history of the cassette on this episode of Half Price Books, All Things Printed and Recorded. Magnetic tape was invented by Fritz Flumer way back in 1928, but it wasn't until 1963 that the familiar compact cassette was born in Belgium. Created for dictation machines, these early designs had the same two spools, auto reverse and plastic shell, of the classic cassette you know and love. Sony pressured Philips, the tape's manufacturer, to license the format free of charge, which meant this new technology beat out competitors to become the industry standard. Once developers improved the sound, these new music cassettes became an excellent way for record companies to sell the latest hits. In 1965, albums from artists like Nina Simone, Eartha Kitt, and Johnny Mathis were widely available on this format. Because the 8-track was also in the picture, thanks to Bill Lear of the Learjet Corporation, there was a little bit of a format war going on. However, since the 8-track often had a second of silence right in the middle of your favorite song, the more mechanically reliable cassette had the advantage. By 1968, when carmakers first added an in-dash cassette player, it was pretty clear who would emerge the victor. Once Dolby noise reduction was introduced that same year, cassettes didn't just offer portability, they gave the listeners hiss-free high fidelity. They might not have sounded quite as good as the classic LP, but their affordability meant they were on track to take over album sales by the end of the decade. One reason for this was the blank tape. Cheap to buy and easy to record on, they helped DIY genres like post-punk and rap get popular. In the late 70s, hip-hop pioneer Grandmaster Flash charged people a dollar a minute to make customized party tapes. The popularity of the portable boombox, or ghetto blaster, meant fans could play their favorite songs whenever and wherever they felt like it. In the 1980s, censored music even managed to make its way behind the Iron Curtain through tape swappers who recorded over government-approved pop records with punk and metal songs. But perhaps the most significant use of the cassette was the mixtape, a homemade compilation of songs placed in carefully considered order. This 20th century art form was a pretty good way for lovelorn teens to get their crush to go out with them. Writer Nick Hornby wrote in his book High Fidelity that making a tape is like writing a letter. There's a lot of erasing and rethinking and starting again. The popularity of Sony's Walkman cassette player meant listeners could hear these ultra-private compilations without anyone overhearing. The cassette remained everyone's preferred format through the mid-90s, although the compact disc was hot on its heels. The best-selling albums of 92, 93, and 94 all sold more cassette tapes than CDs, but everything changed in 95 when the Hootie and the Blowfish album Cracked Rear View sold more than twice the number of CDs than cassettes. But the cassette didn't disappear forever. The same nostalgia for vinyl LPs is influencing a whole new generation to stock up on both blank and pre-recorded tapes. National Audio Company in Missouri, the largest of the few remaining manufacturers of cassettes in the U.S., even introduced an awesome mix number one cassette inspired by the 2014 film Guardians of the Galaxy. In 2016, cassette sales in the U.S. rose 74%. The cassette may never regain its former popularity, but the cheap price tag and cool retro appeal means global celebrations like National Cassette Store Day will always keep these tapes in the spotlight. Now if you excuse us, we've got a mixtape to finish. This has been Half Price Books, all things printed and recorded. To learn more about the history of the cassette, check out our blog at blog.hpb.com. Until next time, catch you on the flip side.